Welcome everyone to another observability clinic. Today's topic is an introduction to anomaly detection based on DQL, the Dynatrace query language. And with me, as always, I have guests that know about these capabilities much more than I do. Uh, today, it's David Brundl, Product Manager at Dynatrace. Servus, David, how are you? Servus, um, I'm good. Thanks, thanks. Great way to today. I'm, I'm, yeah, pumped up, excited. Perfect. Hey, um, you know, Davis has been with us for many, many years, the anomaly detection, the root cause analysis, and obviously with uh, bringing more data into Grail, uh, making it accessible by DQL, the Dynatrace query language, it obviously makes a lot of sense that we also bring anomaly detection to any type of data in DQL. And this is why I really am looking forward to this session to get an overview of what's possible now for our users. And I know we have planned additional, more in-depth, advanced session, use case-based sessions. But I think today, David, if you mind, if you don't mind, just uh, take us on a journey and explain to us how uh, people can leverage the anomaly detection based on DQL. Great. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for the great introduction. Um, yes, today, we have an, an introduction about a media detection based on TQL where we explain more in a generic way about the tool, how we can use it, what we can expect, uh, get familiar with that. And as you just said already, um, there will be an addition follow up uh, where we get more and detailed uh, use cases uh, deep in and also um, yeah, introduce other PMs um, on a specific domain like security or data observability, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. So it's more is more generic. It's like a, a start uh, in the journey, I would say. Um, and yeah, so again, as you were said, I'm product manager uh, at the capability data intelligence. Um, and I'm mostly topic around Omni detection. So everything it's uh, detecting anomalies, uh, it's my part. And yeah, today I also have, uh, thanks for the opportunity to share also the all hard work that the capability, capability did uh, to make it possible here. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited after in a demo to show it. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start uh, what we'll learn today. So in three steps, so the first one, we will like having an, a short use case, or we'd say um, about the challenge of detecting uh, milieus in the high canal data of this huge scale of of uh, cloud observability, the challenges behind it. So I put it like an icon here with an iceberg. So at the beginning, we had just see the iceberg with the observability. You have now the opportunity to see the full scale of the iceberg and all the stuff. It's it's great, but it's also bringing some challenges with this. Uh, and um, they have, we have some um, examples on that. The next part, an exciting thing I uh, like to demo, like sim to simulate uh, the Davis AI analyzers mm -hmm. and then afterward to configure an omni detection on that. Yeah, to put more in detail uh, on that. And then this, the next point will be what we can expect, when we can expect this nice feature uh, and what's gonna be the future. So let's jump directly into the challenge at the beginning. So here, like the, the scale of cloud observability. So I have some, let's say statistical, the um some uh, explanation here so we have one host three disk five data points so it's like equal here we have 15 signals per minute it's quite good um increasing the, the number of hosts to 100 it's then we have 1500 data points uh in a minute that's quite good but the challenge will show you of course we have much more uh different uh, metrics, yeah, CPU usage, uh, disk memory, and all the stuff together. So it's, we have to multiply, multiply, multiply it here like with 50 signals, and then we have 5,000 data points a minute. So on the day, uh, we will reach a total amount of 72 million of data. And, and over the week, we have already 50 million data points that we have to observe and uh, see if everything is abnormal, I would say. So the challenge also that we see it and clear here is like, okay, we have some some business applications, uh, what we say for the users and say, okay, we expect an high availability with 99.9% .9 availability. So we expect some 0.1 abnormal behavior, would say, yeah. So now we get like 50,000 data, uh, 
potential, I would say, uh, sending an event that something is abnormal. Yeah. We could say, okay, we can increase the availability to 99.99, so 0 0.01, then we have 5,000 a week, but we see the number of the uh, of the host. Yeah, so we have large uh, customers that might have large, big environments. So we talk still talking about 100 hosts and you have to deal with, or statistically, with 5,000 potential uh, incidences could coming up. So this is the challenge that we also have, always have, and it's something that DBCI uh, provide with uh, machine learning and uh, uh, an algorithm that based on your data to figure out okay which is really a potential alert and which is not. Um, so mm -hmm. to reduce the noise or stuff here, uh, we have great on detection behind it. In general, we have the seasonal detection models to identify seasonality on your data because the user behavior changed over the time, like for sure between Monday and Friday, for sure on weekends mm -hmm. to, to identify, okay, uh, what is normal and not normal. The second part on the causal AI, you of course, most of the customer are aware of it, the root cause analysis. So we have bring all the events that happens around your smartscape topologies uh, together collected to one problem this also reduce um, noise on that and also get more focused detailed information for the sre team and say okay what's happened and also with the timeline uh, over the time and so on but what we also need in any cases is like okay um when we still the scale of your cloud will be increased. Of course, the alerts will also increase, uh, kind of parallel. So we need some more specific um, opportunity for, for the users that they can use their domain specific requirement and just using the Davis analyzer uh, and fulfill their use cases or more an update on, on specific data they want, uh, like the seasonal baseline or um, static threshold, kind of like that. Um, so that's what we like to bring, um, or our vision is more to bring DVCI more, bring more access to, to for the mm -hmm. user, yeah, mm -hmm. to, to play around on that. Hey, David, uh, just yeah. a, a quick recap, because thank you so much for the, the great explanation. I really like your kind of, uh, statistical model earlier, where you said in, you know, if a small environment, you already have some data points, the bigger the environments. And as you said, we have users that have uh, thousands of hosts, uh, uh, many, many more pods, many, many more uh, service endpoints, right? That it create a lot of data. And it's great to know that we have already invested over many years into uh, solving the problem of uh, alert fatigue uh, or the reducing the alert noise, as you say here with our baselining, uh, then also kind of um, causal, uh, causal AI, where we say, uh, so uh, several different metrics that have an anomaly actually belong together to one bigger problem. So instead of alerting you 50 times, 100 times on 100 different metrics that all go in strange directions, we simply create one problem and then we show you all this data. But what I'm really excited about, and obviously I've been playing with this, um, is the ability to now bring these analytics capabilities to everyone on any type of data and uh, then being able to, you know, doing the forecasting, figuring out um, is any other data behaving abnormal and then also business data, right? I think as a lot of people are now using Dynatrace no longer just for your infrastructure monitoring, but also for your business monitoring. So you can use anomaly detection capabilities from Davis to say in which direction does this metric go? And uh, is this a problem? Yes or no? And then being preventive even with the forecasting. So it, it's really cool stuff. And I can also, it's just what you said, the team has done a tremendous job and I'm very excited to see this now in the hands of everyone. Yes, it's, it's a, just about perfectly. So it's the beauty of the data. It's, it doesn't matter which angle you see it or where you're coming from, coming, coming from a context from uh, business or security, mm -hmm. you can use it, take the analyzer on it and you, you have it already, your congregation on that. So. That's where we also gained the big advantage uh, of DQL. So DVCI supports you in every context. Yeah. So 
it's not only the metrics. So it's actually it's like you can use bis events, you can use mm -hmm. logs, you can use any event. Mm -hmm. uh, and addition that's very also unique. You can just also join two time series, or you can reach a time series with logs, for example, uh, and then go through the DVCI analyzer, just um, select it, what you need, and then you have it already. Mm -hmm. Either in simulation, either you can put it on a dashboard to get a visual feedback on that, or you want to create an Amir text on that to get notified something is wrong, yeah, for example, on that. So, yeah, a lot of talk. Let's let's go go live to the demo. Let's simulate and see how this looks like. So for that, uh, I love to use notebooks as a playground. Yeah, notebooks are great to to play around to as a data analyst uh, to yeah play around with your data. So for that, um, we just starting with a metric. Um, and you can see here by the building up exploring metrics, you have different uh, opportunity to choose. Yeah, let's for example tag here um, process IO rights, yeah, select by DT source entity, yeah, split by, and can run it. And what we see here, we see all the process group instances of my uh, environment here and a beautiful line chart. So, how we can now create Davis analyzer on that. So we go on options where you're familiar to see all the um, line chart visualization and underneath we see here the opportunity, the, the option here, Davis. We have to activate Davis I, so okay, now it's active. Uh, and an analyzer is just an easy one, uh, simple to use. We do see here, in addition, the forecast is already out there, uh, the new detection is static threshold, seasonal baseline, auto adaptive. So just select one um, and then we can just run it. So we select selected, run the analysis. And what it does here, it takes every line here, um, calculated an own threshold based on last week data. So when I select all on the my table to res result time series here, we do see all the data um, have an own threshold, for example, up here. Um, so let's take the last two hours to get more zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's more, more visual better. So, so this is a, a great um, setup here. So we actually, I will start it because I do see not any annotations on that. So this is a great um, from a detection congregation. Um, to showcase how a new detection should look like. So we have show advanced properties here, where you find a uh, want to alert on a missing data. We have the three or five sliding window. I can change it um, to one. Then we would see here the spike here will be show me down a simulation of potential alert. So take all again mm -hmm. or much more. <laughs> so we get already over alerted here. Um, and it's going to be a little bit like nemesis too, too harsh. So I'll go back to three again. Um, on it again. And yeah, we have one. So we also see here that what we want on a table underneath to get more also feedback to say, show me the one with the potential alert here. So you can just um, sort it and then we just, uh, sorry, select the one and then you see yeah. immediately okay with this setup yeah we get an alert mm -hmm. so what we want in notebooks is that the customer can play around and set up the right com detection on it yeah to get visual feedback on that mm -hmm. um have it just quickly because for me and i know i'm in the in the beneficial situation that i've seen this before but it just excites me every time i see it so what you are giving us now is a way to say any type of any type of metric. And as you said earlier, it could be a metric, it can come from a log, it can come from a business event. Any type of data that is in Grail, you can create a query like here, put it on a timeline, and then you can say, I want to see what is the baseline that Davis would calculate, either seasonal, adaptive baseline. Obviously, we still have the, the, the static threshold in there as well. So you get the visual baseline for the time period. On top of that, you can also say, 
if I would set up alerting now on this particular metric or on this particular data point, and I wanted to alert on if the sample is violating three times. So if like a metric is like above the threshold for three consecutive uh, um, measure points, then I would get an alert. And we even see it visually here how often this would have happened. So this is a great way to visually see the baseline, the corridor, but also what would happen from an alerting perspective in case I would enable alerting on this. And this is just really nicely done, visually appealing and, and just nice. Thank you so much. It's really cool. I just thank you. The kudos goes to the team. Uh, they had yeah. a lot of work on that. Um, and yeah, also, also the one at we start uh, to bring the new, the new detection on TQL as a one major goal and task is that we want as Davis to be more transparent, to more mm -hmm. explainable by itself. Yeah. Uh, because all I got the question, I get an alert uh, or I get a problem by Davis, but why does this happen and so on? So with this, uh, in the future, for sure, you can open a problem and say, okay, show one in notebooks. And we simulated back again and said, that's where he was alerting on you. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it's always transparent um, in now. So with this setup, let's jump based on the scenario. Of course, there will be an addition follow-up. Uh, observability clinic will get more specific use case with notebooks and all that stuff. Yeah. So we say with the functionalities here. So now with the setup, it's okay, this is fine for me. Let's create a new detection of that. So we, because it's here, notebooks is just for simulation uh, and get uh, familiar with that. So we go here with OpenWiz and we see here Davis on new detection. So you click on that. And then you're jumping mm -hmm. right here to the detection app. Now we're creating an immediate tag on that. So we say here that's it's my e conflict, for example. You can put some descriptions mm -hmm. on that, why you want to have it and all this stuff. So the test. The source is like showing where you're coming from. So mm -hmm. obviously it's for notebooks, but thinking of like you coming from an SLO application. So there's gonna be an any other context or the contents that you're coming from. So you're in an SLO application, for example, you want to create an real detection on that, and then I say, okay, uh, you're coming from an SLO app, and you see on the list, and after then just for filtering quickly, okay, show me all SLO configuration or what I want created. On the query, we just get copy based um, from the notebook. So we have it already here, uh, what we have just made. In addition, we have two, they will be fixed, um, but in a moment you have to choose the interval one minute um, to give it the information. Um, so the analyzer works on one minute base resolution so to get the, the right uh, threshold, uh, you have to add it. Um, on the customer parameters, you see all that we have set up in the side panel mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, and then afterwards, just create a template. Yeah, so test, test. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and the event properties, yes, you have much more possibilities. You can say, okay, don't open a problem or I can add a tag and something like that, so key value. So uh, we bring also more flexibility for a customer to for the domain use cases. Yeah, but for sure for the event, when you uh, violate a threshold, hey, create an event with this des description, with this name, you can find it, but you can also add some event properties mm -hmm. on it. And then you click on validate. Everything's green, that's good. Uh, you can save it, and then it's here. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, can I can I quickly recap, David? Yes. Recap. I always like recap also for you to to challenge me if I got something wrong or correct me. But what you are basically telling me here is that, like a data analyst would start in the notebook, uh, would uh, figure out what type of uh, data points they're interested in. They can come from anything in Grail. You showed us earlier that you used metrics. Uh, in the notebook, you can already visually see when you're applying certain Davis analyzers, like the baseline, how would the baseline look like for this metric? How would the violation look like? And then if you say, well, I do not just want to have this on a notebook, I also want to kind of actively create an anomaly detection rule, which means every time now this metric is violating my baseline for whatever based on the on the baseline settings, I then want to create or that I want Davis to create an alert for me or an event for me. And you can even specify the event properties. So this is a really nice end-to-end -end way. You start with visually analyzing the data, visually specifying your normal detection, and then you can just with the open width say, now I want to do it for real. 
every data point configuration point has been taken over from the notebook to this cool app here. It's called the Davis Anomaly Detection app. You can fill in the, the last final details and then and then you're good to go. And then you just sit and wait. Hopefully never an alert will happen. But in case there's obviously a challenge yeah. with your with the data and it's violating your baseline, then you would get um an, an event in Dynatrace. Yes. And this is an easy step. Yeah. Um so uh you can also create here for sure uh just different opportunities, also create a mere detection uh direct here. You mm -hmm. have to be a little bit familiar with time series. Mm -hmm. Um, but we decided also because you don't have some visual feedback here. So we, if you're not familiar or want to see how this happened, I would say start with only detection. So it's open for you and notebooks with some simple configuration mm -hmm. um, to uh, to start with it to play around with it. Um, because we don't want to copy, you know, the power of notebooks. Yeah. So mm -hmm. use an app that we is providing already. Uh, get used to it, and really everyone. Uh, play around with notebooks and just yeah stay there and then jump in here. What we also have here, so it's a part more mm -hmm. of the migration transformation part here. Improve your metrics rate configuration with TQL. So what does it mean? We show this here um, because we also have the capability on on the uh, you have using metric events for your domain specific requirements. So let's just I just sorry but test. Uh, David, for example, let's click here and just create here um, just to the built in host and now use this uh, usage, mm -hmm. put a filter on it, entity host, choosing someone specific. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you go specials and then just click so test and save it. So if you like, you are here on the, on the metric events and say, okay, I would like to use now the new power of DQL and the new attraction. And this will be an also an easy step. So you can click here, improve a mute, uh, on improve selector, uh, metric selector on configuration mm -hmm. with DQL. Then we see here my configuration here. Cool. Mm -hmm. You just can just click it, but be aware of it. When we transform it, of course, we will then enable the uh, metric events because you get them twice in a mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So also here, uh, it's based on the transpiler is going through, uh, but please check if everything is right. So you transform it, hmm. let's reload the page. Uh, then we see here, oh. Davis, test David. And then we can see with uh, open with, uh, with notebooks here, for example, and then we see a, mm -hmm. just a preview how does it look like. So we see now a time series usage, CP usage by DTD host, and also the filter one that I just made here. Yeah, Very cool. it. so yeah. Every, I recommend here to, to just check it with that and say, okay, it's fine, everything is good. Uh, because as I said, it's going to be disabled on metric events. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. Again, recap for a lot of you probably know the the custom metric events that we already had in there, and you showed this early in the settings 2.0, um, which is great. But now you can also use the power of this app here that converts it over to you or transforms it from the metric selector based custom alerts to, as you said, the DQL based uh, custom alerts, and um, with obviously all all the power having everything centrally here in this. Yeah. In this tool, yeah, perfect. In this app, mm -hmm. for sure, there will be a long list. Also, we have some filter options here. Mm -hmm. You can add filter. Ah, yeah, that's great. Uh, here, also to show columns. Um, there will, be, of course, some improvements on that for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, here's a nice overview to get all your conflicts by filtering out, because it's going to be much more because you're jumping from different um use cases or different contents, as I said, from SLO or, or uh, from uh, business flow, maybe we will see. Yeah. So, is anything mm -hmm. also open for internal other application? You can use it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's that's kind of the start in the direction of the attraction. So, yeah. so when 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 you the user can have it. So, uh, we split kind of up. So the, the use case that I've shown on notebooks. Yeah. Um, and of course, it's not only notebooks. So it's also, you can see it on dashboards. Mm -hmm. So 
is something also we like to be consistent. You, if you know how to use it in notebooks, then you know how to use it on dashboard. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add it here. For example, we also have here the same side panel with all the uh, analyzers. So you know how to use that here. Um, also in workflows, mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. thing. So you're using the DBSI analyzer. You have in workflows much more possibility, much more granularity, how to do more specific um, cool stuff here. But you also see here, it's always here. Yeah, the same same mechanism. Um, that we have. Mm -hmm. So this will be available on the release on 289. It's kind of mid of April. So on the part of like the notebooks uh, on dashboard and workflows with the side panel, yeah, on the simulations. So you can, you can start, use it. Now uh, you can put it on a dashboard, also see the baseline. Um, and one month later uh, with 291, you will also have the capability to create a new text mapper. Yeah. Um, and and also what we like to uh, also important with the side panel here. So also for the future, it's not the end. There's gonna be much more analyzers like mm -hmm. a detection on forecast, yeah, multivariant analyzer where you have like on a service baseline. Uh, you have error and uh, requests, for example, you can combine it and all this stuff. So they're going to be, in addition, over time, you will find all the new analyzers here on this selection. Mm -hmm. You can simulate it and say, hey, this fit for my use case, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's what it says is the beginning. It has a, bit, a good basis. Uh, and yeah, hope you're happy to use it and hope you like it. Yeah. I do. Definitely, David. Thank you so much for giving us this overview. I think this was a like really great, first of all, uh, and a reminder again how challenging it is to actually work uh, with high cardinality data. I think you did a great job in the beginning with your PowerPoint slides. Uh, then reminding us that we uh, at Dynatrace with Davis, we have tackled this problem for many, many years, but now we give you and everyone the power to kind of ad hoc uh, use the Davis, the different analyzers on notebooks, on dashboards, and then creating these um, these uh, alerts uh, based on on all the configuration that they kind of put together in notebooks and dashboards. Really cool, David. I'm looking forward to have you back. As we said, we are going to do another kind of deep dive deep dive session on individual use cases. Then we also want to share some of these things on the playground tenant, the Dynatrace playground tenant with uh, with notebooks. Uh, that, that everybody can then access and then just uh, start from there. But uh, yeah, for now, anything else to say, David? Any final words? Ah, oh, you got me. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to your feedback. So there will be a feedback channel on, on that. Um, just to write, hey, yeah, I want to know much more or what, what else or we can improve. I always said this product is also uh, built with the customer. So there's a lot of feedback there. Uh, how to use it uh, before and now. And uh, so and we always put with our customer the, the product together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it should be filled for the customer that is their own product. Perfect. Okay. Cool. With this, thank you so much. I say thank you. See you next time. Bye bye. See you next. Thanks. Bye.